بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. At this point in time, now that we are completing our deeds, two important things are very important, which these are the internal aspects of our ibadah. Every Muslim is wajib for Muslims to know this. Allah Ta'ala says about the Prophets, يَدْعُونَنَا رَغَبًا وَرَهَبًا The Prophets and the Anbiya, they used to worship Allah with hope and with fear. If you don't have in your worship hope, and if you don't have in your worship fear, your worship is incomplete. I'll explain how. We know that a condition of the Salat is to make wudu. A condition of the Salat is to have all your body parts covered correctly. A condition of the Salat is facing the Qibla. If a person, he praying Salat and he faces the you know, opposite of the Qibla, his prayer is not accepted. If a person's performing salah and they don't wear a head covering, yani for the sisters, they don't wear, they don't cover their hair, their salat is not accepted. For a man, he is wearing, he is performing salat, but he's performing salat in shorts. His thighs are exposed. His salat is not accepted. These are the preconditions. Similarly, there's a spiritual condition. Spiritual condition. And what is that? Al khawf wa raja. If a person doesn't have that, some dangerous things can happen. I'm going to explain. Shaitan will be able to destroy our fast, destroy our prayer. Right now we fasted, right? But do you know what the Prophet ﷺ taught us here? He says, لا يقولن أحدكم سمت رمضان كله ولا قمت رمضان كله عجيب. He said, let not one of you say, I fasted all of Ramadan. And I stand all the nights of Ramadan. Why not? What if you know you, you, you fasted all of Ramadan and you prayed all the nights of Ramadan? Why can't you say that? So the ulama mentioned, the Prophet said this is because we don't know what deficiency, what wrong intention, what mistake, what shortcoming we may have had. And this is prideful. I did all of it. The Prophet is teaching us that be between fear and hope. Don't be so sure about what you do. And this is why a lot of people, brothers and sisters, because they don't have the fear and the hope, they think themselves better than other people. This is a major sickness. It's called piousitis. Piousitis. You know, meningitis and sinusitis, and now we have piousitis. Piousitis, he thinks he's more pious than other people. Do you know why that happens? It's because he's sure that Allah has accepted it. He does not have khawf. You have to have in your ibadah khawf and raja. If you don't have the khawf, you will start thinking, I became the most pious person in the world. Ha, ha look at me, I fasted. Look at this poor, wretched badbakht. I badbakht cycle. Look at this badbakht. Hmm? This wretched, unfortunate loser. He did not fast. Subhanallah. Saadi Shirazi rahmatullahi in the Bustan, he mentions the story of a pious man who woke up for tahajjud with his son. This is, remember, this is a nafil prayer. Tahajjud is a nafil prayer. So he woke up in tahajjud with his son. And his son told his father, he said, Oh my father, He said, Oh my father, look at all of these people that are sleeping and we woke up for ibadah. He said, Oh my son, just because of this one word that you said, thinking yourself better than others, maybe their sleeping is better than our worship. Do not say this, oh my son, that you are better than them because we don't know that Allah accept our deeds or did not accept our deeds. You don't know if Allah accepted or not. And what a beautiful advice is being given by Ibn Rajab Hamali. That كَانَ السَّلَفُ الصَّالِحِ يَجْتَهِدُونَ فِي إِتْمَامِ الْعَمَلِ وَإِتْقَانِهِ that the Salaf al-Salihin, they would make an effort to do their action perfectly. But then after that, their hearts would be fearful that, Ya Allah, is my prayer accepted? Is my fast accepted or not accepted? Brothers and sisters, if we don't have this fear, do you know what's going to happen? We're automatically going to think ourselves better than others. I fasted all of Ramadan. I prayed all of Ramadan. Look at this wretched person. Look at this badbakht person. He didn't fast. He didn't pray. Leave everybody's situation to Allah. Allah Ta'ala knows. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala forgave a prostitute because of the water that she gave to a thirsty dog. 
I'm not encouraging that people should leave fasting and say my heart is clean. This is another deception of shaitan. Shaitan will do whatever he can. He has a whole list of tricks up his sleeve to destroy you. This is another trick. Oh, kalba mapakas, kalba masafas, machi ajatil ad namaz khana na nadarum. My heart is clean. I don't need to pray. My heart is clean. I don't need to show off to people in fasting. Oh, zalim, this is not showing off. This is the command of Allah. When the boss tells you to do the job, said, Oh, my boss, you know that my heart is clean. You know I'm a loyal employee. You know I'm a loyal employee. Don't use this one. I'm, Amir, don't use this. You know that I'm a loyal employee. I don't need to go and do the job right now. You know how loyal I am. I don't need to prove my loyalty. I don't need to be a show-off like all the other employees. If an employee says that to the employer, the employer will fire them immediately. That this person is making bhana. This person is bana juime kuna. This person is making excuses. I don't want to show off like the other employees. My heart is so pure. I am the most loyal employee. I don't need to prove my loyalty by doing work. <laughs> it's so foolish, right? I don't need to prove my loyalty by doing any work. I want to get free salary by sitting you know, at the job and getting nothing. So brothers and sisters, we have to watch out for the shaitanic thoughts that come in our mind by khawf and raja. Right here, the Salaf al-Sadiqeen, Allah Ta'ala mentions, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ And those who give what they give, and those who do whatever they do, and their hearts are trembling that we are going to go back to Allah. Allah mentions in Surah An-Nur, one of the qualities of the people of Allah is that their hearts will be trembling. So Aisha Siddiqa asked, Ya Rasulullah, is this talking about the people who are stealing and the robbers and the killers and the murderers? Those who do what they do and their hearts are trembling that they're going to return to their Lord. He said, no, this is the talking about the people who give charity and they're fasting and they're praying and they're fearful that Allah might not accept from them. وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْا those who give what they give of charity and those who do fasting and prayers but their hearts are trembling annahum ila rabbihim raji'un that they're going to return to Allah and Allah might not accept their worship why Allah Ta'ala is merciful and then we have raja also now don't become too khawf that's why al imanu bayn al khawfi wal raja look at the, the the beauty of our deen the balance now you have the khawf Allah Ta'ala might not accept but then we have raja also. What is the meaning of raja? Raja is that hope that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave a sinner because of water that she gave to a dog. You see? Allah forgave a sinner because of the water that she gave to a dog. Inshallah, I have hope that Allah will accept my 30 days of fast. Inshallah, Allah is so merciful. Allah forgave the sinner. And I'm doing my best. I'm also a sinner. But I'm doing my best. Inshallah, Allah ta'ala will accept me. Man sama Ramadana imana wa ihtisaba, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Anyone who fasts the month of Ramadan with iman and hoping for the reward. You see the hope. Hoping for the reward. Then Allah will forgive all the past sins. So brothers and sisters, if we have khawf in every action we do, in our hajj, when we do hajj, we come back, my name is Haji Filani. You have to say Haji after my name. If you don't say it, then your roza is not accepted. <laughs> That's it. You have to say haji with my name. You're so sure about your haji getting accepted? Subhanallah. Khawf. In every action, we have to have the khawf. And then we have to have raja, hope. No, inshallah, Allah is arhamur rahimin. Allah ta'ala is shakur. He is the most appreciative of the deeds that we do. Inshallah, that I have hope that Allah ta'ala will accept my deeds. Why? Because when Allah has given you the tawfiq, to do that action, that means that Allah wants to accept it from you. Why would He give you the ability to do it if He didn't want to accept it from you? This is what the Salaf has also mentioned. Subhanallah. If Allah does not want to accept you, why did He make you do dua? The fact that He gave you the tawfiq to make dua, that means that Allah is giving you, inshallah, the acceptance as well. This is mentioned by the Salaf, by the pious people, that the fact that Allah gave you the ability to pray, it means that He wants to accept your prayer. The fact that He gave you the ability to fast, inshallah, it means that He wants to accept your fast. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu said, he said, when Allah has opened the doors of dua, know that He has opened the doors of acceptance. 
Allahu Akbar. This is the raja we should have. On one side, khawf, that our hearts are trembling. Maybe we did not do the fast properly. But on the other hand, reminding ourselves that why would Allah give me the tawfiq to do something if He is not going to accept it from me? Why would I invite you to my house if I don't want to serve you? I would have never invited you in the first place. If I didn't like you, I wouldn't have invited you to my house in the first place. If I didn't like you, I would have never called you in the first place. The fact that Allah has called us, the fact that Allah has invited us, the fact that Allah has accepted us, inshallah, it means that He will give us the, the acceptance, inshallah, as well. So these are just some of the things, brothers and sisters, that we should be taking into consideration. That in the end of every action, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ This is another point. When Nabi Kareem Sallallahu says that when help from Allah and victory comes to you, O Muhammad Sallallahu and you see people entering into the deen of Allah in large numbers, then glorify Allah, thank Him, and make istighfar. This is how we celebrate. That when we complete an action, when we complete fasting, when we complete a deed, when we complete a effort, after that, we should thank Allah, glorify Him. That is why on the Eid day, what do we say? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Thank you, O oh Allah. You are great, O oh Allah. You are much more worthy than all of this that we have done, Ya Allah. We glorify Allah. That glorification is thanking Allah. And what do we do? We make istighfar. Why do we make istighfar? We did not commit a sin. Do you notice that after we perform the salat, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, Allahu Akbar, Astaghfirullah, 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 Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Why do we make istighfar? We didn't commit a sin. We did a good deed. But the reason the ulama mentioned why we say istighfar after our prayers, we say Allahu Akbar, yani Allah is greater than this prayer. Allah is more worthy than this. This prayer does nothing to fulfill the haqq of Allah's majesty. We can never fulfill the haqq of Allah. That's why we say Allahu Akbar. Then what do we say? Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Oh Allah, forgive me that of any of my deficiencies. Oh Allah, forgive me for any of my shortcomings. Oh Allah, forgive me that I am performing this prayer, but my mind is here and there and not focused on concentration to worship to you. This is another point, to make istighfar in these last moments. And the most beautiful dua that combines the khawf and raja. All the brothers and sisters should make this your amal after every action, after your prayer, after your fast, after your hajj, after your charity. What should we say? Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samiul alim. The dua of Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam. Ayat number 186 and 187 in Surah Al Baqarah. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ The dua of Ibrahim and Ismail. That, oh Allah, accept from us, even though our actions are not worthy. تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ Verily, you are the hearing of our prayers and you are the knowing of our intentions. And then in the next ayat, رَبَّنَا وَبَعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولُ رَبَّنَا وَبَعَثْ وَجَعَلْنَا مُسْلِمَيْنِ لَكَ وَمِن so when we say this dua, Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyul alim. This is what? It is a hope. It is a hope. Ya Allah, we ask of you to accept. Hope. This is hope. Raja. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَابُ الرَّحِيمُ And forgive us. This is khawf. Al-Raja, Umid, and khawf. رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا we have hope in you, O oh Allah. Accept our prayers because you are the one who hears and you are the one we, who, know, who knows. وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا And O oh Allah, forgive us. This is the khawf. إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ You are the most forgiving. You are the most merciful. My Shaykh Rahmatullah used to say, this insha'Allah dua, if you say it insha'Allah, it will guarantee acceptance. This is the dua of Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam. Any action that you do, whether it's your salat, whether it's your zakat, whether it's your hajj, whether it's your fasting, whether it's your tilawat, after you finish it, رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ مِنَّا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ السَّمِيعُ الْعَلِيمُ وَتُبْ عَلَيْنَا 
Oh Allah, accept it, and oh Allah, forgive us. Raja and khawf, subhanallah, in one dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept us. This was the amal of the salaf, that they would be more concerned of the acceptance of the dua. With that being said, inshallah, a couple of announcements. Number one is sadaqatul fitr. Brothers and sisters, sadaqatul fitr, the Prophet ﷺ has made it binding upon every fasting person and non-fasting person. If you are not fasting also in the month of Ramadan, because of an excuse, you still have to give sadaqatul fitr if you are carrying the amount of zakat which is binding upon you. If you have the nisab amount on the day of, you know, this day, right now, then sadaqatul fitr is binding upon you and upon the head of every ho- the household, the youngins that are also... Yani whoever you are responsible for. Husband and wife, they should, pay for each, they should pay separately. If the husband gives on behalf of the wife, it's sufficient. As she knows, she should know about it. But if she has her own responsibility, she has her own goal, she has to give her own zakat. Therefore, her sadaqatul fitr should also be given herself. If it is given on behalf and it is known, that is fine. Sadaqatul fitr has to be given before the Eid Salat. So discharge it now, ASAP, before the inshallah... Uh, the end of Ramadan comes so that it is discharged. Tu'matul lil masakin. It is a gift for the masakin so that they also have something for the day of Eid to have to eat, to enjoy. And tuhratul lil sa'imi min al lagwi wal rafath. And it is a purification for the fasting person for the mistakes and for the wrong, inappropriate things he may have said or did in that month. That's point number one. Point number two, the month, the, the inshallah, Eid, it will possibly be tonight is moon sighting. It might be, inshallah, depending upon the moon sighting Saturday, it's a possibility because there's 29 days. A month is 29 days and 30 days. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned this hadith that the month of Ramadan, Hajj and the, 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 the month of Hajj and the month of Ramadan, they do not become incomplete by 29 days. When it becomes 29 days, this is wrong. The Prophet ﷺ said, no month of Ramadan becomes cut because of 29 days. If the moon is seen in 29 days, that 29 days is complete. It's not the, it's not the number of days, it's the sighting of the moon. So if a 29 days is also a complete month, some people say this, Ya Groza Khordan, they ate one day. This is a completely wrong and in a, in, in, inappropriate and incorrect statement. The Prophet ﷺ said that this month does not become deficient. When it's 29, people think it's 30 days. So if we see the moon 29, and then they do Eid on the next day, then they say, oh, they ate one day. This is ignorance. The Prophet said, the month of Ramadan does not become cut. If you see the moon on 29, and then you do Eid the next day, this is a full month. The Prophet said this, because people used to say, oh, they ate one day, or they, you know, skipped one day, or something like that. No. The month of Ramadan does not become less through 29 days. Understand? So this is another. So depending upon the moon sighting, which is tonight, inshallah, possibility that it will be first of, first of Shawwal will be tomorrow, or it's a major possibility that inshallah it's going to be Sunday. With that being said, brothers and sisters, we are in touch with our local authorities. There will not be public Eid Salat here at Masjid Al-Huda. There will not be public Eid Salat at Masjid Al-Huda or in any of the masajid that I am aware of. We are cooperating with our local authorities. We are with our representatives in care. It's very, very important for us to take these things into consideration. Those amongst us who know how to do the Eid prayer, you can learn the Eid prayer and in an open area, maybe in the backyard where there's some access that people can come, they can lead the Eid Salat with three other males, the Imam, including three other males. The same requirements for Jummah. You can perform that in an open area in your backyard with your family. It will be appropriate if you can do the Salatul Eid where it will be first comes the Salat, which is wajib, six takbirat extra, Three extra takbirs in the first rakat, three extra takbirs in the second rakat, right? And then after that will be the salat, and the salat will be like two rakat salat of Jummah, two rakat salat read loudly. So those amongst us who would like to perform the Eid salat, they can do it in their own uh, domain, but however, it should be in a place which has a little bit of accessibility. 
locking the door and doing it in the home, this is not correct according to the majority opinion and the correct opinion of the scholars that we, according to our understanding. Others say that it can be done at home as well. Those amongst you who follow whatever of the local scholars, our understanding is this. That locking yourself inside the home and doing it with two, three people, this would not be valid. It sh at least it should be done with, you know, in the backyard, having an open access so that whoever is invited, and they know that they can come and in open air they can do that. So let's take into this consideration that we don't want to immediately now after some things are opening, we now open up the uh, masajid without any, taking any precautions. If the masjid, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be opened, we will be sending out the message. And when we do open it, it will still be taking all of the precautions into consideration. The people who come to the masjid will be required to have masks. And everybody will be required to bring their own musalla. And they will have a certain limitation. We're not going to be able to open up like that. So we are working with our local authorities, inshallah. And we are, you know, uh, staying in touch with them. But in the meantime, this Salatul Eid, we recommend that in an open area with a couple of people, those who are able, inshallah, do it. Those who are not able, they ask, what can we do? So in the books of fiqh, it has been mentioned that those who are not able or they miss Salatul Eid, they can perform four rakat Salat al duha Nafil prayer. And it's not done in the uh, Jamaat, it's not done. And you just recite four rakats like you do Salatul duha two rakats and then two rakats. Of nafil as a gratitude and a shukrana to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not fard, it is not wajib, it is not necessary, it's not done in jamaat. You do it individually and you could celebrate in the appropriate way that uh, we know and keeping the distancing and keeping you know all the other precautions in mind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. At this moment and this time, the most important thing for us to take into consideration is making dua for qabuliyat. From amongst the blessed nights also is the night of Eid. The night of Eid is also one of the nights in which the dua is accepted. It is also like one of the nights where uh, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the ja'izah. They call it Laylatul Ja'izah, the night when the rewards are distributed. So it is on that night that we should try at least, that even though there's, there might not be tarawih on that night, we should try to perform you know, a couple of prayers, uh, rakats of tahajjud, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for His mercy. Ask Allah Ta'ala for acceptance. May Allah Ta'ala accept every single one of us. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiul alim. Wa tub alayna inna kanta tawabur rahim. Rahmatik ya rahmat.